In the last video, I finished the frame and now I can move on to making the wheels. And those need to be at least an inch thick, but I don't have any plywood that's thick enough. So I'm gonna be making them in two layers. And the first step is to cut out the blanks from half inch plywood. I also need hubs for the wheels. And once again, that'll be half inch plywood. Next, I can mark the center on those hubs and drill them out for either the bearings that will go in there or the 5 8 inch shaft. I marked the center on the wheel blanks and drill those out with a 5 8 inch bit as well. And the reason why I'm drilling it to that hole size is to make everything easier to line up. That matches the axle shaft for the bottom wheel and also the bearings for the upper wheel fit on a 5 8 inch shaft. And to cut it into a perfect circle, I made a circle guide from just a piece of plywood. It has a 5 8 inch hole on one end for the shaft to fit through as a pivot point. And it also has a 5 8 inch hole on the other end so that the collar that I have on my router will fit in there. After I had the first pass on the first blank done, I carefully measured it and saw that it was a little bit big. So I had to adjust my circle guide by drilling another hole. With all four of the wheel blanks cut, I can get them glued together in pairs. And I'm using the axle shaft to make sure that they're lined up correctly. Not a bad idea to get out an accurate square. Make sure that that axle shaft is actually square to the wheel. This is the lower wheel and I can get the hub glued on as well. To put together the upper wheel, I cut another piece of shaft, a shorter one. And once again, I can get the hub glued on, but this one's different because it has the bearing in there. And you can see that the bearing fits on the shaft and lines up the hub. When I cut out the wheel blanks with the handheld router, that was one way of doing that. But a better way is to actually do it on a router table if you have one. So I'm going to show that now, except I'm just going to trim a very small amount off the wheel blanks that I already have because I left them just slightly oversized so that I could do this and show how it's done. While the handheld method is pretty accurate, this is very accurate. So. This would be the way to do it if you have the option. I have a tapered laminate trimming bit in my handheld router here. And the idea with this is to slightly crown the wheels. And that will leave the middle of the wheel higher so that the blade will track towards the center of the wheel. With that done, I can try on the tire and see how that fits. These are ones that I bought. Although you can also use the right size bicycle inner tube instead. Now I can get the other hub for the upper wheel glued on in exactly the same way. These wheels need to be balanced and to do that I've got a pair of aluminum rails clamped down to my workbench. I can balance the wheel on the axle to see which side of the wheel is heavier. This can take a while especially for a material like plywood that has you know varying densities throughout. And to get it balanced, you can either take weight away by drilling holes or you can add weight. And I'm doing that with these three quarter inch screws. And here you can see I had to add quite a few to this one. Now that the upper wheel is finished, I can enlarge that center hole from five eighths that the shaft fit in out to one inch so that the shaft will go all the way through and won't rub. I need to glue the axle into the lower wheel and I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive all over the shaft and I want to make sure that I get the excess scraped off as well. I'm adding a stop collar to the upper wheel axle and then I can slide the wheel on with the bearings and put another stop collar on the outside to keep the wheel on.
And here we can look and see if there's any wobble on the upper wheel, and this looks good. And I'll try it on the bottom wheel. I got this strip of wood, so you can see that there's very little. I took the upper wheel off, along with the upper wheel mount, and decided that I should have a spacer behind that inner stop collar so that it doesn't come loose and work its way back. This is a 3 8 inch bolt that will adjust the tracking and I need to get a metal plate in there for this push against and decided that this would be, you know, the way to do it the hard way. Rather than doing this before I put it together, I'll do it now where I can't get my fingers in. Well, I'm pretty sure that the glue on its own and the nice tight fit will hold that axle on the lower wheel in place. I figure it won't hurt to add a little bit of insurance with a cross pin and this is just a number 10 machine screw that I'm gluing in. I need to make the back panel for the lower part of the frame and it's a piece of three quarter inch plywood with some holes in there, in particular a hole for the shaft to go through for the lower wheel bearing that will come out the back. And I drilled that hole to one inch and then realized that that wasn't big enough so I had to re-drill it to two inches. And once again I made a plywood spacer to go up against the bearing. I'm going to slide the lower wheel in place. And then I made this alignment tool that will measure where the upper wheel is. And I can compare that to the lower wheel and I can see that my spacer wasn't thick enough. So I made a new one, put that on and put the wheel back. Now I can get the drive pulley on the lower wheel shaft and get the set screw tightened up and then get that panel that I just made screwed in place as well. I've got another bearing hub to make and I'm starting with a small hole right through and I use a one inch bit from one side going about halfway and then drill from the other side with the correct size bit for the bearings that I'm using. And you need to be able to move this block around so that you can adjust the alignment on the lower wheel. So I'm drilling oversized holes for the mounting screws. And I don't have any more of the shiny stop collars left so I'll have to use this old one. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the lower wheel lined up. I've cut wooden strips that fit tightly behind the lower wheel and that will position it parallel to the frame while I mark and drill the holes for the bearing block on the back and get that screwed in place. Now fast forwards months in the future to the present day and I've come up with a different way of lining up that lower wheel and it uses two strips that are screwed directly to the wheels starting with the upper wheel and within a small margin of error this will ensure that the two wheels are coplanar. And as it turns out this new method shows that the first method was pretty darn close. And with the alignment set I can use four more screws to lock that down. And that does it for this one. In the next video, I'll be building the tension mechanism for this saw, which is kind of different for a homemade bandsaw.